All right, so somebody called me, so shame on them. And my phone stopped, sorry about that. So I'm still working on the car, still trying to like, form it to where it's out of the way and it feels like you know what's going on here you don't want it too precise you don't want it it's more about the colors and shapes when you're doing chrome or you're doing a car or something that has like all this shiny stuff it's not about or even water for that matter like i feel like you tackle them all the same um, you don't try to paint translucent because you're just painting water. You're painting shapes and colors. Um, so I'm going to go with a little bit of the Liz room, although that's probably a little more uh, cad, red, but you can mix a little white and a little um, cad yellow and And you can even take that color and say that's like the base or whatever. And I do want to maybe warm this up somehow later on. But right now I want to tackle everything and if that bothers me later, I'll do it. Like. If you have something painted and you're like, oh, I don't know about that, um, well, just wait. There's no hurry to adjust it now because it might not need adjusting in the future. So um, do what you want to do or fill in everything else. Like get the painting going. Like don't be so concerned about one spot right now. Blue, ultramarine, burnt sienna, a little white or dip it in the lighter color. I just want to try to mix some of this darker brown to see how it'll work. So I'm not going to paint the whole thing brown, but you can come in, especially with palm trees, like you, you, you have this horizontal ability a lot of times when you're painting them. This one looks like you have a little bit of the vertical aspect too, if you want it. Um, but basically it's just really, trying to nail it, uh, maybe get a little bit darker with it now. Still make it a little more brown than blue or, Still make it a little more brown, but dark. Um, maybe darker. I'm just trying to get some of this palm fronds and the ins and outs of the palmetto. Now I can come back in with a little bit of the lighter color or a little bit of lighter version of that. And you can hit on top of it, hit of highlights of the fronds. You can use that orange that you had for some of the stuff too. Maybe even more of an orange, so lizard, yellow, white, brown. It's a little bit darker up top, for sure. Browner and darker. It's in shadow, so there's some of that color. I feel like that hints in right here. I even feel like this palm tree, the trunk's lit up, so like hit it. Wherever you see this color, like let's see what it looks like. Okay. 
could hint at it just a little bit. You could drag it across, you could hint down. Like, I don't want anything that's just like straight branch down or straight trunk down. That's not appealing. I'm gonna make, like, the, a gray that we mixed. It was right here. Let's see what that looks like. I feel like that's pretty good. Like, we have this gray, like, right there. You can do the same thing that you kind of did on this side, on this side. And this is actually too light. Um, make some of the yellow that you had with the purple and a little bit of the white. And I'll come up with a more yellowish tone. I feel like I'm going to have to come back with the dark and kind of cut in. But it's... It's good that I'm getting actually some sort of a highlight on something so I can um, start to visualize it just a little bit more. Trying to get just like a little bit of, not too much of the green. There is like some sort of like still vibe of like this green thing, like it's muted. Going into the uh, purple. Putting a little brown in it, a little more blue. The more of that color I'm trying to work is in. All right. Um, I feel like it's darker. So if it's darker, just add more blue and brown to it, and it'll still be faded out, like, but it'll be darker. Maybe I just do both of them at the same time and then try to make some of the areas darker and then some of them lighter. I can still, I could even use a little, I wouldn't, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't use that much in this tree. I would use like some sort of value um, that I a highlight that I put into this first tree, into the back tree. It'll just um, harmonize them better together. I'm out of blue already. Ultramarine, that is. <clears throat> I feel like I've used it in a bunch of the colors. So I'm going to mix a dark, kind of in the same pile of crap that I've been mixing. Right in there. Just really trying to get up. Sometimes you mix a color you don't know what you mix, especially if you didn't don't have piles anymore. Like maybe that's maybe that color is best suited for uh, the dark, and then you test it out and then see oh where does this work best. So this might work best uh, like on the edge of this tree or in the middle right there as it goes down. Trees are usually darker at their base and they actually uh, show some of the color from the ground below. So, 
should be a good point of reference to kind of fill out. Uh, I can go a little bit darker. I'm gonna go a little bit darker with the blue and the brown, not have it tinted as much. I'm talking the slight stuff here, but I wanna show you that there's a tree back there. It's not connected to this one, but How, and then and then you say, well, how do you do that? Well, maybe go a little darker. Warmer. times too and I feel like y'all might have heard me before but sometimes putting paint down helps you actually be able to put other paint down and be able to manipulate and control the chaos like watercolors although we're painting in oil watercolor is just basically controlling chaos um, it's a controlled mayhem because how do you control water when it goes wherever you want it to go right I mean, you can, you have to be very diligent and precise with it, and it's fun. And I love watercolor, it's one of my favorite mediums. And then oil, like a lot of times you actually just have to put enough paint down to actually be able to maneuver the paint against the other paint. And a lot of times we're scared that we don't, we don't have enough paint on the canvas to actually manipulate what we have towards the edge of what is beside it. And then, and then being able to manipulate both of the, um, edges is half the game or being able to even mix some of these colors on the canvas more than, um, and being not afraid to mess up something that you think is right is a good, uh, nugget too. So. Feel like I'm full of a lot of good nuggets today. Hope you're heating them, letting them seek in. Hope you're watching it, not fast forwarding it. Double time. Uh, there's some areas that I probably want a little bit warmer to make pop, but I I could just uh, hold off on the. Um, Sometimes you, you, like I just wiped that color and I was like, why is it lighter? Well, my brush tapped the sky, didn't know it. So then the next couple strokes were just a lot lighter than what you originally thought. <clears throat> this is not a Bob Ross painting. This is definitely Do it to it. Okay, so I'm get more of a brown too. I'm gonna even add it back there. Even where I see the brown now, like maybe add it or you know, there's a zigzag or something. There's one or two. This is there. Um, something back in there is a little more orangey. So that's only 14 minutes. Um, let's keep going. Let's just finish out the street and we'll see uh, what happens. I'm gonna go into uh, a little bit of the lighter purple. It's not the color I need because I uh, just tried it out. So white, blue, ultramarine, 
maybe a little bit of that purple, maybe a little bit lighter. We'll see. Um, trying to get this sidewall after the building. It does cut across the street, some of this grass. I'll ixnay. I'll even probably use this, kind of like come in a little bit. Uh, like a lot of times we don't even talk about brush strikes in painting, but if you can follow the contour sometimes of what, what's going on, obviously your sidewalk feels flat, have a flat stroke. Your wall feels vertical, have more vertical strokes. Uh, you want to break them up every from now on now and time to time. Like you don't want it to just be so strict and rigid. Um, but strokes do mean a lot. Like that's why you play with foliage. Like foliage is where you let your brush just do some things naturally that you wouldn't do normally. Uh, and you know, like this car, like I, I was kind of following the contour. If actually you didn't see me paint, okay. But I was trying to talk about how little strikes is possible to make the car. And we're still working, but I'm probably 25 strokes in on that car. But that doesn't mean much because that was a black stroke here, black stroke down, black stroke to the right, black stroke down, black stroke to, you know, like did the wheel well and all of a sudden you're at 12 and then you put another color in and then all of a sudden you're at 14 and you put uh, another color in you're also at a different value but <clears throat> I was using uh, darkest like blue and brown ultramarine blue a little bit of white and one of the purples that we had kind of mixed earlier and now I just want to like come in and actually just those two little segments really made that pop in the foreground and I can try to make it pop a little more um it comes back in the space and it pops back here but it is a little bit I feel like that street at that cross area is a little bit bluer so let's see if we can get at the blueness of that cross back street feel like I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Heck, every now and then make some random strokes. Small things that you can cover up. But make things funner. All right. Um, I'm going to stop here and think about it. We'll hit you on the flip side. We're looking pretty good so far. We'll probably tackle the lanterns and the rest of this in the next one or two more segments. All right, guys. Peace. That was so 80s of me. I'm an 80s kid. Sorry about that.